the fertilizer section in the metric chemistry paper is largely used to provide context and a number of different real world applications where rates of reaction and chemical equilibrium can be tested but there are a number of theoretical items that need to be understood for this section. First is that plants require non-mineral nutrients, those are considered carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, those are obtained from the atmosphere, carbon dioxide and water. The mineral nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium are obtained from the soil and then obviously from fertilizers. So for each of these nutrients it's necessary to know their function. We know that nitrogen promotes leaf growth and it also plays a role in the color of the leaf and it also promotes plant size or growth. We know that phosphorus is involved in the root growth in plants and also helps with disease resistance and potassium promotes fruit or flower quality and growth. It supports photosynthesis and it also helps in temperature resistance to drought. Then we need to know what the source of each of these minerals is. We know that nitrogen comes from manure or guano, which is essentially bird droppings and most often in the form of ammonium nitrate or urea. Phosphorus is most commonly found in bone meal or phosphates and potassium comes from wood ash, also known as potash and potassium salts. The production part of this is important because there are a number of reactions here. Specifically, most of them are reversible reactions which set up a chemical equilibrium which allow us to ask questions around the equilibrium constant and Le Chatelier's principle. But what's important to understand here is that the Haber process is used in the production of ammonia. The Oswald process is used in the production of nitric acid and the contact process is used in the production of sulfuric acid. Then if we take those products there and we combine ammonia with nitric acid, we would form ammonium nitrate, which is one of the main sources of nitrogen in plants. If we combine the ammonia with sulfuric acid, we would form ammonium sulfate, which is also a very good source of nitrogen for plants. And then another source of nitrogen is fractional distillation of liquid air, where essentially you cool the air down until it becomes liquid. And because nitrogen boils at a very low temperature of 169 degrees Celsius, it will boil first and you can therefore separate the nitrogen from the other air elements. Phosphorus is most often found in rock phosphates, which is combined with phosphoric acid or sulfuric acid to form a superphosphate. Potassium is most often mined and it comes in the form of potassium chloride, potassium nitrate or potassium sulfate. Once again, this is the theoretical component of fertilizers. There is a practical component, but what is most important is understanding these reactions that are involved in the production because they can be used and tested in rates of reactions and chemical equilibrium.